Beautiful HD here. Quite a setup you've got there, Cold. How you doing? Oh, thank you very much. How are we sounding? We good? Yeah, sounds good to me. Perfect. I, obviously, I bought a new mic. I got a good cam. I'm on Twitch these days. Uh, like all AEW wrestlers are allowed to Turn be. Turn up a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, it's exciting. Thanks for having me. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, man. So what's written in? What's written right behind you in Japanese right there? What, what costs in yen right there that's right behind you? That's pretty cool. I think a lot of people know me. I'm a real merch shill. So when I toured with DDT Wrestling, one of my favorite promotions of all time in Japan, they made me a little merch sign, and then I kept it and I framed it. I thought it was kind of cool. So I believe that's T-shirts for 3,000 yens, and then um, I think I was selling, like, pictures and micro ballers, so it might say, like, other stuff, 1,000 yen. And you have a, a replica of the Iron Man Championship. You're a former Iron Man champion, correct? I, I am a former Iron Man championship. I do not have a replica. I'm not much of a belt collector, actually, if that makes uh, – I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I, I don't really collect belts. What do so wrestlers I guess, collect I guess, most? Well, hold on, hold on. Right. Let me get it. I got to get in this question, Mike. Hold on Good. a second. So you talk about your Twitch channel. I mean, are you are you required to give 50% of your revenue to Tony Khan and he takes the other 50% <laughs> out of your downside guarantee? Uh Absolutely. Not. And actually, after this show, a bunch of all, a lot of AEW wrestlers are going to go play Among Us. And I really wanted to invite Tony to come play with us because I thought he'd probably get a kick out of it. Um, but I, I decided to, st to steer away from that, those political uh, um, game playing, I, I guess. Well, you, you don't so. want you don't want Tony to know about Twitch because once he knows about it, he's going to oh, demand yeah, some yeah. revenue. No, I think yes. he'd be all I think he'd be all, all in, I guess, for lack of better words. I think he'd play with us. I think he'd be great. Now, when it comes to Twitch, we've been able to get a glimpse into a lot of wrestlers' personal lives in little ways, you know, d depending on how much they want us to see. But one of the things that we can see are people's backgrounds with a lot of things <laughs> that they like and they hold dear to them that's behind them. When it comes to wrestlers, some of the ones that you know, what is the thing that, that wrestlers like to collect the most? Obviously, with Zack Ryder, it was, you know, he's a guy that loves action figures. You know, I'm not a wrestler. Obviously, I always like programs. Some people are, are autograph hunters. You know, what is it that what is it that you like to collect, and what is it that some of the people around you that you've seen like to collect? Yeah, obviously, Hawkins and Riders are are enamored with collecting wrestling figures. Turn which him up a little bit, Brian. Podcast. Uh, I, I myself, I have a lot of um, uh, records. I have vinyl that I collect uh, in my room here. It's just wrestling stuff. In my other rooms, it's kind of I keep the wrestling stuff away from it. But uh, I have like. Um, I have the Terry Funk album from Japan. I'm very proud of. I picked up at Totocon when I was over in Japan. I have a weird Hulk Hogan obscure. Um, I have uh, some, uh, I want to say Glamour Girl, the Crush Gals from uh, All Japan Women's. I have a vinyl from them. Uh, I have a Freddie Blassie one. It's all kind of framed in, um, in a different room right now. So you mentioned Twitch, and also I've been alerted that your podcast is going to be starting up again. So tell us a little bit about what you've got going on here is... Is this part of the dark order, by the way? Is this what is what is uh, <laughs> resulted in the return of all of these things? Um, not necessarily. Again, I'm not. I don't even know if I'm necessarily all fully into the dark order. I'm kind of hanging around, and uh, they've kind of invited me to hang out with them, and I really enjoy them, and they've been winning a lot. So obviously, in, in total kayfabe here, Brody is doing amazing, and so why not be along with the winners? But uh, yeah, the Art of Wrestling podcast, which I started in July of 2010 which was a weekly series of me sitting down in person, talking to my friends in the industry, in uh, whether it be locker rooms or a lot of hotels, uh, and in some cases, uh, cars, and has gotten way better with audio over the years, uh, has come back uh, the original format, and I kind of do them in sessions. So two weeks ago, I had Matt Hardy on. I talked to him in person. And then yesterday, uh, the podcast with myself and Proud and Powerful dropped. And I have four more episodes that are going to be coming out every two weeks. Uh, it's all with AEW talent. Again, I there's something about being in person, looking someone in the eye, and doing these really um, heart to heart talks about our careers. And um, I love a, a good story about coming up and kind of fighting through adversity. Uh, I feel I have a great story in myself for that. So I love talking to my fellow wrestlers and people I've been on the road with and people I've just shed, you know, so many uh, gallons of sweat with or whether whatever it might be in the ring. And so um, I was able to, you know, we've been going down to Jacksonville in, you know, in quarantine, uh, going down and, and wrestling for the AEW tapings. So every now and then I after we did our covid tests, um, you know, I would grab a guest and we would kind of keep distanced and we would do a podcast. Now, if I recall correctly, when you when you shut down the podcast the first time, 
Or actually, I think it, I think you just decided to change like the format of the fo- the podcast, if I recall correctly. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, there was there was the issue that I mean, whatever you were going to do with the podcast, once COVID hit and there were no shows, it's a little harder to sit down with people and do a podcast. So. You know, if you if you watch like being the elite or whatever, I mean, it's clear that, you know, as everyone's getting ready for the show, like there's a lot of time to hang out with people and talk to them and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, is that one of the main reasons you decided to go back to this format or was it just this format was so popular that you figured, well, I got the opportunity to do it. Let's go back to this. So the format was super popular. And and what happened was it just got to the point where I felt the pressure of grabbing guests every single week had just gotten to me. Um, and then I thought maybe if I could kind of do a diary series, it would be a little easier where I would have to get guests or, or get some of my friends and, and time it up. That was very hard. And eventually after about a year, I, it just, there was like a little too much pressure and I wanted to take the pressure off of me. I had done very well in my career that I, I, I didn't need to like hustle as crazy. And it's kind of weird because. Uh, well, and I'll say this. So the new po- so I've been doing the new podcast because that's what everyone kind of grew up on. A lot of people actually grew up on me doing these podcasts, and I just do them in packages. Like I'll grab six people, and then when I'm done, I'll be like, okay, now I'm going to put them out. I'll put them out in seasons. But it it was a wild decision that I did kind of stop it because you know probably I essentially I was probably making more money as a podcaster, but you know I, I, my art totally was a wrestler and I wanted to do the podcast for fun, but the podcast had taken over, but I really, my heart was like, I'm, I want to be a wrestler and I, it's so hard to do both and all of this. And eventually after about eight or nine years, it it just, there was so much happening that I just needed to cool down for my own sanity. And so now with this, they come out in new seasons. It really is for my own sanity and I could do it at my own time. And and that uh, I'm very happy with for my own mental health. Now, are you the, like the chief cook and bottle washer when it comes to these shows? When you do them, do you and record them four or six at a time? Are you then the one that is editing them, producing them, doing what you need to do with them? Or do you have some assistance in trying to put some of this stuff together so you're not constantly working on that? Or is it such a passion for you? Do you enjoy it that much where you do love doing all the editing and doing everything that is involved with it? Uh, it's it's more of I'm a control freak I would say so in that in that sense I, I do everything and over the years so many grateful amazing wrestling fans have reached out and were like can I help can I do graphics can I do editing can I do sound and, and I've had like real professionals who've gone through like you know better than better schooling saying I will help you and a lot of do- asking for free and I don't necessarily want anyone's help for free but um it's just I I really want to control everything so I have you know I've taught myself how to edit I've taught myself garage band I've I've taught myself photoshop I I kind of want to have my hand in everything and then you know when I do when I did do seminars back before all of this happened uh you know that's something I would tell the students that that I would train is you have to have a grasp of all of these things. I know you just want to learn how to be a wrestler, but you do, you need to learn how to video edit. You need, need to learn how to uh, do Photoshop, learn different languages. These, the, and this is advice for, you know, if you're 16 or 17, like I, I hated school. I really didn't like school, but you know, if, I don't know if Matt Hardy at the time had told me Colts, I know you're in school right now, learn Spanish because you can then become a mega star in, you know, CMLL if you want to. And then you look at people like Jack Evans and Angelico uh, who are, you know, stars in AEW now, but for years were able to just be in Mexico, um, you know, and be bigger stars because they knew the language. So um, yeah, I've taught myself the other stuff and I recommend, you know, people who want to get into wrestling is just learn everything. It is amazing because I don't know when you started podcasting, but it was a long time ago. And I started in 2005 and I knew nothing about anything. And all I knew is I loved Art Bell's radio show and I wanted to try to have good audio quality. And I just, I I had to learn everything over the last 15 years. And, you know, I I didn't go to school for broadcasting. I didn't go to school to be an engineer. I made 8,000 mistakes. I I listen back to shows now and it's horrifying how bad they sounded. But I mean, there's so many people that, that got into podcasting and that's all it is, is, is you're learning from square one and you're just trying to figure out all of these things that like a normal person in a radio would have gone to school for. And we just never did. We, we had to figure it all out on our own. 
but th there's so much power in eventually knowing it. Yes, yeah, we we taught ourselves, you know, YouTube tutorials are the greatest, but there's so much power and if you need something done, not to uh, rely on somebody else. And, you know, I, I'm sure this goes for everyone out there is when you rely on someone else, you know, their priority is them and my priority is me. So they're gonna make sure they are in front of you and I'm gonna make sure I'm number one when, it's, when it comes to putting out a podcast, getting better audio, um, setting up my Patreon or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, that's the power in knowing how to do it. You know, I don't want to make this anything about bearing WWE or anything, but I mean, it is impossible to not talk about this today. The WWE is, is apparently attempting to take over people's personal Twitch accounts. I mean, it's, it's, it's mind blowing, but I mean, it does seem abundantly clear that if you work for WWE, I mean, the idea is that y you're, like they own your life and they they own everything you do and that's what they want. And in AEW, it seems that, you know, they own you in terms of the wrestling aspect of it when you're on television, but you've got an incredible amount of freedom. I mean, I, I went on the the Jericho cruise and everybody from AEW was there. And I had gone back and done indies for, for like two and a half years. And I'd been in a bunch of independent locker rooms. And when I went on the cruise, I mean, the most amazing thing to me was AW felt like an independent locker room. And you obviously have been with WWE, you've been on the independents. Is that kind of the feeling that you have in AEW? That it's more like just a I don't want to say glorified, because it's not glorified, like it's on national television, but it's like a really, really big independent promotion where you have a lot of freedom to be yourself. You know, that starts at the top and it's all about leadership so you can talk about who you know what other other promotions you want to talk about and you look at the leadership and it is a trickle down situation because i you know i guess when i was at wwe uh, i would try to explain to people the hierarchy and it just comes from people being afraid of the very top you know i can only speak for our my team which is AEW. our leader is is not only tony khan but it's also uh the young bucks kenny omega and cody who are the evps up top and and that's when we're talking about, you know, the independent spirit. So Tony is an amazing leader. He comes like just a, he comes to work like a dude. He, you know, he also uh, leads by wearing a mask uh, and there's, you know, there's sanitizing stuff all over. And that's from day one. You know, Tony has led an example like that because this is something I'm very, uh, I'm very fearful. And so, you know, my fears have been really put, rela been relaxed uh, from going to work with AEW, but, um, also the leadership from the Young Bucks and making sure and, and Cody and Kenny and making sure that it is a relaxed environment that is something different that we can kind of put a spin on how big time wrestling locker rooms are you know it's happening right now it's kind of a movement so hopefully in 30 40 years the norm isn't walking on eggshells the norm of a big time wrestling promotion is having fun and and just doing your job and wrestling is back on uh wherever you listen to your podcast uh the art of wrestling and of course uh the all the past archives you know over 300 almost 380 episodes are on my patreon patreon.com slash colt cabana only four bucks a month and then for like an extra dollar i do so much extra content and i love doing that over my patreon i am on twitch at colt cabana directly after this we're going to play among us uh evil uno brandon cutler excalibur miro miro will be uh on twitch uh who to thunk um, and then, of course, I'm on AEW, uh, All Elite Wrestling. Uh, tickets are available. It's very safe. Uh, you know, if you feel you need to get out of the house, alleliterestling.com, and come on down to Jacksonville and be safe and watch wrestling live, which is something that is very uh, medicinal almost for so many of us. Uh, at uh, Twitter, at Instagram, at Colt Cabana. And then, of course, ColtMerch.com. I have children's books that I would love to sign to your children um, or micro brawlers. It's a great book. All that fun stuff. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And those documentaries I made, which I know I sent you one 10 years ago, and I and all the, you took a little time to, to watch it. You eventually watched it, and it was great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that documentary. I remember raving about that documentary. That documentary was great.